not get up at 5 a.m. It's grand all round. The time's gonna pass anyway, just start. You can declutter people. If you've been feeling like you just need to sort yourself out, you need to get your life together, you need to get yourself back on track, but you wanna do that before the end of the year. You do not want to wait until January 1st to start living a more positive and healthy lifestyle, then hopefully you will find this video very helpful. It's almost like a quarter four life reset. It is trying to give yourself the best foundation and the best foot forward to go into the new year with. I personally find it so helpful to do this last year because it meant I didn't suddenly have to completely change my lifestyle from January 1st. Everybody knows that January 1st, everybody suddenly feels really motivated, they're gonna do all these things, and then it all is gone by mid-February. I read a comment the other day that I thought was really, that's just one of those comments that kind of slaps you in the face a little bit, and I think it's really useful for the context of this video. Someone had basically put up a video, I believe it was on TikTok, where they had lost quite a substantial amount of weight, and they did a before and after. Now, one of the comments underneath this TikTok video was somebody saying, well, how long did it take to do do this um, and they were talking about the fact that they wanted to lose weight somebody replied to them saying what does it matter how long it took them the time's gonna pass anyway just start if you start now you are going to have already made progress in some way what we're gonna do first is talk about general goal setting and reflection which I think is I know spoken about a lot so if you want to skip that section you can but I feel like there is absolutely no point trying to do a quarter for reset if you don't really know what it is you're resetting and what is important to you. So we're going to start with that and then we're going to talk about the areas that you can focus on in order to start making some improvements. Reflection and goal setting. So like I said, I did this last year and the first thing that I did was go back to my previous vision board, my goals, everything that I had wanted to accomplish within that year. I sat down and I figured out what worked for me, what didn't, what I found challenging, what I frankly didn't care about anymore, what was going really well and I then wrote a list of the things that I wanted to continue with or get rid of or add in for the final quarter of the year and this is a really really useful way of just starting. I think it's great to have everything in your head and to have all of these ideas but to go in just going oh I want to get a bit healthier or I want to make some better food choices that's obviously very good but it's not really that set in stone and you're not really helping yourself out write them down write down everything that you still need to accomplish or still want to accomplish towards the end of the year and like i said anything that you're just not interested in anymore but i think it's also really important especially if you're someone who didn't necessarily have a vision board or make any goals at the beginning of the year I just want you to generally reflect on 2024 and think about not only the things that you would like to change and would like to improve, but also the things that have gone really well, the things that have brought you joy and made you happy because you want those things to continue. I think quite often we focus on the things that we want to change and that we want to get rid of, which is good, it has positive impacts, but also we need to make sure that we are focusing on the positive things that we are currently doing and making sure that we continue to do those and they don't get lost within all the culling of everything else that we're trying to stop. Some of the areas that you can reflect upon in regards to your 2024 outside of the things that I've just said can be your family, can be your health, can be your mental well-being, could be your career, your education. So for example, if you know that you want a promotion in 2025, you have an entire quarter that you can demonstrate your abilities and you can move towards that. Even if that is just opening up a conversation with your manager and discussing what exactly you would need to do in order to get a promotion, opening up a conversation with your organization, is there any way you can help? Is there any plans going on next year that maybe you can kind of get involved in in some way? Sign yourself up to things ahead of time that you can then start immediately in 2025. It is really, really important to align any of those goals, any of the things that you want to do, any of your focuses for the next couple of months, align them with what matters and what is important to you. It can be very easy to follow other people's goals and other people's lifestyles because you see it work for them, so you assume it's going to work for you. But I think all goals and all lifestyle changes should always come back to whatever your core values are and your core beliefs yourself. You are somebody who genuinely is happiest when you are giving back then you might want to make sure that one of your goals is to do some form of volunteering of which 
Christmas time is a really great time to give back so you can start looking into volunteering at soup kitchens or going to see the elderly who maybe don't have any family over Christmas and you can start arranging that now so that is something that you can have in place before January hits but it aligns with your core value so for you that is getting your life together that is making you feel good so just write down what some of your core values are and see if they align with some of those goals and reflections that you've just done just to make sure that you are following what you want to do and not what social media tells you to do. Something I would strongly recommend is breaking down whatever goals that you still have left or anything that you want to do towards the end of the year and breaking that down into small and actionable steps. For example, if you know that you want to save £5,000 by the end of the year, that's fine, but you need to give yourself a timeline. You need to break that down into actionable steps. So what I mean by that is how many birthdays do you have coming up that you're going to have to spend money on in that space of time? How many bills do you know that are going to come out within that space of time? Do you know what your earnings are going to be? So you need to sit down and make a list of all the actionable steps that you need to do in order to get to that five grand goal. Obviously, that, this is a very specific example, but whatever it is or whatever the things are that you really want to focus on over the next couple of months, give yourself a plan for each of those things with small actionable steps. Because also every time you tick off one of those steps, you feel good, it boosts your motivation, you're moving forward. It's grand all round. The next thing I would recommend doing is rebuilding any routines that you might have. If you feel like you've lost your routines or your routines just aren't working for you or maybe you copied the 5am club but the 5am club just doesn't work for you, then reevaluate your routines in alignment with your goals and in alignment with anything that you want to get done for the end of this year. What I mean is do not get up at 5am if you know that you have to work until 11pm because you are going to be exhausted and you're not going to be able to accomplish much at all because you are not sleeping very much okay what i would recommend is kind of looking at your overall days now this might differ depending on what day it is looking at it and thinking okay what are the things that i have to do i've got no got no choice in what are the things that i sometimes need to do what are the things that i would like to do and try and figure out where you can fit things in that's going to work in a way that isn't demotivating that isn't too much for you to cope with and you're just going to end up sacking it off again but that actually works for you and your goals so for me getting up earlier does tend to work i am a very sleepy person and by the time i finished work my energy is at zero and that is irrespective of what time I got up. So if I get up earlier, I actually get things done before work. I know I don't get a whole lot done after work. I also just prefer to keep my evenings more for relaxation and doing some of the lower energy tasks. The easiest way to do that is to either get Google Calendar up or just get a notepad or whatever it is and physically time block in the routines that you think you would like to do and check that it's actually going to work and be feasible there are so many times where i've been like i want to do this this and this before work but i didn't get up and give myself enough time or i underestimated how long it was going to take me to physically get from the bed to a vertical position like i have to factor in a good 20 minutes from my alarm getting up to me functioning like a normal human being so do it realistically figure out what you can fit in and don't go zero to 100 with it. Start small and build it up. The next one is to declutter and organize. I love doing this towards the end of the year and I think that this can overflow into so many different areas of your life. So there's the obvious decluttering and organization as in the space around you so you can go through all of your stuff, donate anything that you don't want. Um, you can reorganize things. Like I love moving furniture around a room or changing what's on my shelves. It feels, I don't know if this is just me, I'm sure it's not. It just makes the room feel new, fresh, I feel motivated. Or if I clean out my car. If you're anything like me, the car gets forgotten about until you actually physically get in it and you're like, oh. <laughs> check all your bags and your coats for all the tickets and the stubs and less of an issue now with contactless but get rid of any scrap pieces of paper you've got floating around receipts that you don't need but you've clung on for some reason but you're way past the exchange date at this point anyway everything that you are looking around that is just clogging up your room clogging up space get rid of it now you can also do this with your tech so if you have photos that you're like i don't know why i still have these on here however many hundreds of screenshots that you've got that you don't know why you screenshotted in the first place old text messages old contacts of people that you don't even know who they are anymore like if it ends with hinge or bumble or tinder and you are not dating and you have no idea who they are do you need to keep their name 
Probably not. Go through, delete all your old contacts, your old photos, your old documents, screenshots, anything that you don't need. Another thing that you can declutter, which is slightly more controversial, but I think most people secretly agree with, is that you can declutter people. Now, you don't have to do this in a really nasty way, but you can distance yourself and remove yourself from people who just do not serve you. That doesn't mean they're a terrible person. It doesn't mean you're a terrible person. But people change and grow over time. And it might be that you two just do not gel anymore. And that you don't bring out the best in each other. Or it might be that they're one of those people that every time you're like, I'm going to do this positive thing. They kind of just crap all over it. So they try and bring you down. Whether it's intentionally or unintentionally. Or whether it's just that your goals and what you want have completely change the lifestyle that you're now living and it doesn't really fit with the people that you were originally with. Now you might still have connections with them or your main bond might have been the fact that you went to the pub every Friday together. So reevaluate who you surround yourself with and whether or not you are being, bringing positivity to their life and they're bringing positivity to your life and whether it's a relationship that you actually want to carry on into the new year. I think doing a very quick health and wellness check is really handy. Now this might already come up in your goals and reflection part but if it hasn't, just do a quick health and wellness check, figure out where you are, how you feel, what's going well, what isn't going well, and make sure that you are in the best mind frame and the best physical state to be able to go ahead and finish this year with a bang and get everything done that you want to. I think it is incredibly difficult to try and accomplish things that might seem like really big goals or I think it could be really hard to kind of get your life together and feel like you're making positive changes if you are struggling with your mental well-being or with your physical well-being so just check in with yourself and figure out if there's any changes that you can make there or anything that you think is working for you that you can do more of. Another thing that I think you should be doing for this quarter four life reset is to look at your technology and figure out whether or not it's working for you or against you so I have very much set up all of my social media now to have the explore page and the contents and everything that I'm being showed on the feed to align with my goals, my lifestyle, everything that I want and just to have it positive. Um, anything that comes up that makes me feel uncomfortable or that doesn't make me feel very good, I just immediately like hold it down if it's on Instagram and say not interested or whatever. I, I remove it so it doesn't keep coming up. And another thing that I do is I follow accounts that are aligned with myself and what I want and I unfollow accounts that maybe don't make me feel that great. And finally, I've also put restrictions onto my tech and just some like technical settings I think have been really useful. So on my iPhone, it now restricts all of my apps between the times of I think 10 and 7 a.m. So when I, if I try and go into my phone then it comes up with like a time restriction and I have to do multiple clicks to get into it. That's enough of a reminder for me to be like, oh, okay, I was about to scroll up, have it. I don't need to do that and I'll put my phone back. Another thing that I've done is from 9 p.m. my screen goes to a really warm light. So it's um, the nighttime, I don't know if it's nighttime routine or nighttime setting, nighttime screen setting, something like that. But basically I have changed it to go from the normal blue light into a very warm yellow light from 9 p.m. So if I am looking at my phone between 9 and 10, it will be usually to text my partner or my friend or something like that then at least the light isn't quite as harsh as it would be. In regards to other tech I've also got a lamp by my bed and what that does is it mimics the sunrise so I know a lot of people have is it the hatch I think there's like a really expensive version I just got a cheap one off of Amazon and you just program in on an app the time that you want to start lighting up and the time you want it to be the brightest so mine clocks on at like half past six on weekends and then will gradually get brightest until seven and then I think it's half past five on weekdays gradually brightest at six and it really does help to have more of a gradual wake up and be less startled and as someone who really struggles with snoozing and actually physically getting up it really is helpful. I've also got an Alexa and some other kind of smart tech but I realise that costs money but if you do have it try and set up some alarms some routines that really help you keep on track. As much as I love the end of the year I love Christmas and all the holidays, I love Halloween, all of it. It is a very expensive time of year and if you have goals that you are going to want to try and walk into 2025 with or set new ones or whatever it is that you're doing, 
money can impact some of those goals and money can impact mental health it can impact a lot of things so i think it is a really good idea to have a financial reset just to know exactly where you stand with money for this last couple of months which are really expensive are there any additional birthdays how much are you going to spend per person on christmas if that's something that you need to worry about how much income are you going to have are there any end of year bills all of those type of things and just try and be a little bit ahead of the game with it because money stress is is not a pleasant thing so trying to understand your finances as much as you can is really useful i personally use like a savings app and i use some templates um for budgeting and all of that to try and help me out but you can definitely just use a piece of paper and a pen to do it. It's completely up to you. I think it's really important to remember that progress isn't linear. It goes up and down. You need to be flexible with it. Um, the goals that you had at the beginning of the 2024 period might be completely different to now. And in that initial goal and reflection stage, you might have completely overhauled everything. That is fine. You do not need to stick to goals that do not align with you anymore. Always bring it back to you as an individual and what you want. I really do think that visualization and using vision boards and kind of visualizing in your head is a really, really good method to truly confirm what it is that you want because if you are someone who gets really good at visualizing then you'll be able to put yourself in those situations in your head and figure out actually what gets the most emotional response from you and what do you genuinely want to accomplish and that will hopefully help you prioritize and narrow down some of the goals and some of the things that you want to do so if you do want to give that a go i would highly recommend it it's something that i do think is really beneficial for don't help. forget that relaxation and fun is absolutely something that you can have a goal for so if you do feel like you are someone who's really stressed and overwhelmed then don't forget that you can absolutely have those as goals as well if you like this video please thumbs up and subscribe because it means the world to me i'm a small channel and it really helps me out and hopefully i will see you in another video very soon soon.